Thank you. That is a, a wonderful lecture. Um, there's been some um, alternative theories of gravity to try to explain you know, quantum gravity. Um, but um, there's this one called emergent gravity, um, which seems to um, solve the observations of dark matter and dark energy. Um, I was just wondering what you, what you thought about that. Well, there's, there, there, was, there was one theory uh, that said that the um, uh, uh, gravity was behaving, uh, gravity falls off like 1 over r squared, Newton showed that, but that, that it had a long tail at the end, and this was what was making you think that you had dark matter there when it, when it wasn't. This was one of the uh, uh, competing theories. Um, and um, I think there's convincing evidence that that's not true because um, there's so many different independent lines for, for saying that there's dark matter there that's not ordinary particles. In one case, the, the extra mass is produced by the long-range gravitational effects of the ordinary particles. And in the other case, it's being produced by dark matter, which is different. So we have a bullet cluster of galaxies that is collided with each other and passed through. And the galaxies pass through uh, because the, the, the cross-sections for hitting each other are small. And, and so the, the two clusters have passed through each other like this. But there was gas, hot gas in those clusters. And that hot gas is slammed against itself and produced a, a, a ball of hot gas in the middle. This is ordinary matter. So the ordinary matter is distributed as galaxies on each end here and that have passed through. And, and a lot of it is in this gas form lumped in the middle, which is seen by the Chandrasekhar um, uh, uh, X-ray telescope. Now, by looking through this cluster and looking at the distortions caused by gravitational lensing by the, to by the mass, um, uh, looking at faint galaxies in, in the background of this cluster, you can map out where the dark matter is. And, and, and it's in two lumps with the galaxies. There's no lump of, of so-called dark stuff in the middle, which means that the, this is just what you'd expect if it's weakly interacting particles that can, that can pass through. So the... the um, uh, uh, this is an indication that the, uh, that the dark matter is not normal matter. The other thing in that picture of the microwave background I gave you, uh, there are two things about the microwave background that are useful. The dark matter explains why the fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background can be as small as we see, one part in 100,000, and still have time to grow up into the structures that we see today. Because the dark matter gets a head start on what we know the normal matter is doing. And also, those, those, those acoustic waves that you see there, the amplitude of those things can be used to determine the amount of dark matter. And these all agree with the amount that we're calculating from looking at the masses of clusters and things. So I think while there, while there are alternative theories of gravity aiming to solve these things, I think this is pretty convincing that we're looking, know what we're looking at. Um, another question, question over here? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if we're in a bubble universe that came from the early multiverse, um, did that itself expand from a singularity or from like a bigger volume-wise part of the opaque multiverse? Well, it, it, it could have done. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting pretty close to the, we're getting fairly close to the ultimate density, which is the Planck density. We're below that. But I think uh, there's, there's several different uh, uh, models for, for where you get the inflationary state from in the beginning. Um, one is by uh, Hartle and Hawking and uh, Vilenkin. This is the so-called like tunneling from nothing model, where um, the inflating state just suddenly appears and then it expands like this. Um, uh, that's uh, these these bubbles are forming by quantum tunneling. So this is just a different quantum tunneling effect. Um, Li Jingli and I propose that um, um, 
one of the things Linde had suggested was that universes could give birth to other, infl inflating universe could give other birth to other inflating universes like branches coming off a tree. And so uh, we wondered, well, how, where, but where do you get the tr original trunk from? Well, if one of the branches would simply loop back around and grow up to be the trunk, you'd have a little tiny time loop at the beginning of the universe, and so it could be its own mother. <laughs> and so um, this would mean... In, in string theory, the, 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 um, there's compact dimensions, extra compact dimensions. Uh, we, we're dealing with an 11-dimensional universe, some of which are compact. The big microscopic dimensions we see today, inflation tells you they used to be tiny. Okay, And so um, this makes the time dimension curl up and tiny as well in the beginning. So these are some of the ideas. That these are speculations because one of the things that inflation does is it forgets its initial conditions. And so uh, as it expands a lot, it forgets where it started out. So um, uh, we may have to wait for a theory of everything and see what kind of solutions for the very early universe they produce. Yes. Any questions over here? Yes. Um, does everybody more or less agree with this view of the universe now. You said that the Soviets and the Americans disagreed. Um, you know, oh, now they system. agree, yeah. They all so, agree I mean, on inflation, it, Do yes. all the academics more or less agree on more or less what's going on? <laughs> more or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what would you say, Martin? Yes, um, well, I, I, I would say um, they do agree on most of what Richard said, um, back to about a microsecond, but the very early universe, the inflationary era, is still a matter of uh, controversy. And uh, as regards the agreement, I think it's rather nice that uh, we had the uh, Soviet picture and we had the American picture and those very nice European simulations done by a combination <laughs> of uh, uh, scientists in uh, Munich and in Cambridge and in Durham uh, were the ones who have shown that uh, uh, there is this consensus where we get features of uh, both the uh, Soviet view and the American view. That's what we're trying to bring together. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, any, another question? Uh, yes, let's have the other one down here. Then, then we go. Yeah. Thanks again for a fabulous talk. Um, the giant void, the Sloan giant wall, um, it's really big. Um, yes. Is there a size where such structure could be so big that we would not be able to say the universe was homogeneous anymore? Well, I think all these models at very large scales are homogeneous. You see that in the cosmic microwave background. So uh, there is a sort of, it's, it's, it's not a fractal picture that's getting ever, ever big. People, people sort of worried about that when they saw the, um, uh, the, these walls originally. But um, uh, again, we've done um, uh, uh, an enormous uh, uh, simulation, which we've um, uh, looked for uh, filaments like this, and 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 the the um, this uh, Sloan uh, Great Wall is sort of in the in the middle of the distribution of those that you expect. So there's um, you don't expect to find longer and longer and longer ones. Uh, eventually, you come back to the when you're looking on a scale of uh, 13 billion light years, uh, you're getting uh, more um, back to the more sort of uniformity. Uh, yes. Thanks. Um, it's just something I don't quite understand. Um, <laughs> if, if, the dark, if the dark matter is sort of everywhere and, uh, and if there's more of it than, than normal matter, um, is it something we can detect sort of gravitationally within our own solar system affecting the planets and spaceships as they fly around? Or is it kind of not present locally? And so Oh, no, it's that. present locally. And, and, and there's experiments today trying to look for. It just has a small interaction cross-section. So uh, you get a, a giant vat of material, and you're, you're, you're looking for an interaction between these dark matter particles and, and the nuclei of, of, of atoms that you have in your, in your vat. And, and so um, there's experimental searches on them today. Uh, the, these are low density um, uh, things, both the, um, the, the dark matter, uh, the density of that is low com 
in our neighborhood compared with uh, the average density in the solar system and so forth. So it's not affecting the orbits of the planets noticeably. The, the dark energy isn't affecting the, no, the orbits of the planets noticeably. Um, it's so small that it's not affecting those results. A little bit, but just too small mm -hmm. to detect. Mm -hmm. It's concentrated in galaxies, but not clumped on any smaller scale. That's right. It's, yeah. it's smooth. And, and yeah. one of the things we know about it also is that uh, if it were really lumpy, you'd expect to see more gravitational microlensing in uh, looking through of, in galaxies than you do. And so there's, uh, that's another evidence that it's a smooth mm -hmm. component on those scales. Mm -hmm. yes. But it, it does cluster with the matter, and, and it mm -hmm. falls into clusters of galaxies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any question? Uh, yes, sir. Several years ago, actually, uh, suddenly where you are now, uh, Roger Penrose um, suggested it might be possible to see evidence in the cosmic microwave background of interactions between our bubble and other bubble universes in yes. early times. Has that either been shown to be the case, or can it now be disproven? Uh, you, can certainly, you can certainly look for that sort of thing. Um, and eventually, if, if one of these bubbles collided with our bubble, uh, you could see this as a hot spot in the microwave background where the two collided. Um, in fact, if this occurred in the far future, which is what we'd expect from this model, um, it would be the, the question would be: Is that hot enough to kill you? You know, and so um, the, um, uh, the so so in principle, you could do that sort of thing. Um, people have looked. Uh, David Spurgle and other people have looked hard for such effects in the. A w map uh, diagram and haven't found anything um, uh, convincing. It all looks like just standard inflation so far. Mm -hmm. But it's it's an effect you could you it's an effect you could look for. Mm. Yes. Mm. Right. Question over there. Uh, uh, yes. Um, I was listening to the Life Scientific on Radio Four the other day. I had Faye Dawkin on, and she was talking about her theory around the group of. Scientists are looking at causal set theory. And she was explaining in relation to the increasing expansion of the universe that her group found it, uh, well, they predicted it along quite a while ago, but they weren't surprised by the outcome when it was first announced, rather than other people's surprise. I wonder what your thoughts were on that. Well, I think that the... Um um, the, we're dealing here with pretty standard uh, general relativity. And, you know, I think the, the cosmological constant or the, the vacuum energy um, sort of lurked in the back of uh, people's minds. Um, uh, but many people expected not to see it. Um, but when it showed up, I think we uh, pretty quickly recognized what it was. Like I say, we can sort of plot these things in detail and see that we're that this extra stuff. Um, we know there's something else there besides the the dark matter, the dark matter and the ordinary matter. Uh, we see those in clusters of galaxies. They cluster gravitationally. We know from the geometry of the universe that we're measuring by by looking at the size of those uh, uh, dots that we're seeing in the microwave background. Um, we can tell that the geometry of the universe is looking at the present epoch is looking relatively flat, which means it's very much larger than the than the uh, part that uh, that we can see. Just like the the Earth is curved, but this uh, floor looks flat. So we're looking at a small region. It's it's flat. This was one of the predictions of inflation, um, and so um, we know that there's to produce that geometry, you have to have. 70% extra stuff there. So we know that uh, the, uh, there has to be something else there. We know that the universe is accelerating. We know that pressure, negative pressure would have a negative gravitational effect. So there has to be something else other than just positive energy density. So um, this is a fairly natural thing to explain um, uh, you know, what we were seeing. So, so I think although it came as a surprise, um, the um, uh, once we saw that there was an accelerating expansion, people fell on the cosmological constant right away, 
And it's an old thing. It's been around for a long time. I think the next question was the last question. Who'd like to ask the last question? Gentleman there. Oh, later. There we are. Thank you for a very interesting lecture. Um, oh. Resonance on surfaces produces cell-like structures. Mm -hmm. um, and you talked about acoustic energy and events as well. So does, uh, in the very early universe, is some kind of resonance producing these cell-like structures? Well, um, I think we're, we're uh, for example, the, um, uh, the calculations that um, uh, we're using here um, do now include, the early calculations of the um, uh, dark energy did not include this acoustic business, and they produced these um, cellular structures in 2D slices, you know, that you saw, and the filaments. Um, but now we've included those, and you can see a slight difference in them. You know, in other words, those, those counts of the holes that we got, uh, include, that, that simulation included this, all this uh, acoustic phenomena in it. Um, so um, I would say those have, those have already been included in the simulations, but it's uh, the, this... Um, um, uh, and as you say, we're not seeing cells, we're seeing filaments connecting clusters of galaxies. So um, uh, this is a natural phenomenon of the uh, uh, random initial conditions. And um, th this is sort of a, a project of trying to um, uh, push our way back toward the frontier, as, as Martin would say. And so we, we've um, we see the elements being formed at about three minutes. You go back earlier, the inflation's occurring at uh, 10 to minus 35 seconds about. And um, we're, we're trying to test uh, in inflation in more ways. Um, but it's passed a number of these tests uh, in, in spectacular fashion. But then at the frontier, you're always getting people that, that have different models, and they're um, competing at the present time. So the, the quest uh, goes on. Well, I think uh, Richard is going to sign copies of his book, The Cosmic Web, afterwards. But before that, uh, let me just say what a pleasure it's been to hear him once again and to thank him for having so clearly showed how, over the last 40 years, we have clarified these really important questions, really big questions in science about the origin of the structures in the universe. I think this is a great achievement in uh, astronomy. I would say it's one of the great achievements in this period of science. You know, I would say it's up there with plate tectonics and a genome to have actually understood the structure of the universe uh, going right back to a tiny fraction of a second and understanding what's happened now. And as Richard said, every advance in science due in general to better observations and to better ideas opens up new questions. And so just as the questions being asked 40 years ago have been settled, we are now addressing questions that couldn't even have been posed back then. So there's plenty for the younger generation to do, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, let's uh, at this stage thank Richard for a fascinating and entertaining talk. Thanks so much. <laughs>